that nobody knows in them secret places. Y'all believe in God for touching those secret things that are going on in our life. Amen. So I, I praise God. We got King Captain that's going to be um, reaching out to the people on the outside in New Paris. And I ask you that even the Facebook lookers, amen, praise God for you as well, that you come out and enjoy yourself and receive a word from this awesome elder Cameron Wilson, amen. This is September the 28th. Please plan to be here. Again, one voice for Taylor made for everyone. Amen. Now we're going to have something September the 14th. We're going to have a musical, a praise. It's going to be awesome. Groups are going to come out. And you know we love groups that come out and minister to our spirit and praise and worship. How many love praise and worship? So it's going to be a dynamic time. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell your co-workers, tell your bus stop buddy, tell the one at the gas station, just tell everybody, just come on through and have a good time. Amen? Amen. We're now going to have announcements by our bishop and offering by Reverend DuPont, because he's the one that called me over here. talking real fast. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. The psalmist says, Oh my soul and all. Can you bless the Lord with all that you have? You don't care what it look like. You don't care what it sound like. You are just Focus and zoned in on the Lord. I was talking to one of my Church of God in Christ friends, and he said, Reverend, y'all, y'all don't act like no Baptist church. Y'all kind of dry. And I want to caution you not to be scared off by our enthusiasm and our fervor for God. Sometimes we get a, an acute case of the I can't help it, and we just do what we do. But let me, on behalf of this congregation that is known as New Calvary Baptist Church, welcome you here, all of you who are visitors to the homes of our members or family.
And uh, I asked him, he didn't ask me, I asked him if he would take a moment or two uh, to present his case. He is, he is the son of one of our members who has gone home to be with the Lord. So we give him special uh, treatment and favor. Plus, he's my namesake. So would you greet Brother Vincent White as he comes forward to say a word. Y'all set him up over there. Get him, get him set up. Get him set up right there. I told him, don't preach now. Do your trial sermon somewhere else. Don't come up in here. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Bless you, sir. Um, it's, it's not too often that I'm uh, speechless. Uh, but I come to you as a, with a lot of titles. None more important than a father, a husband, and a son. Amen, brother. I'm not going to try to get too emotional, but uh, the son part comes because I'm the son of Doris White Kenny. Amen. And depending on what side of the pew you sat on, she might have scratched you a few bit. But um, coming here was on my heart. And the, the bishop saw me about two or three months, and he said, you know, you should come by. Sort of the same thing that my mother said, you know. But this church is no stranger. I grew up on in South Bridge, Pearl Street. I remember the other congregation that, that this property was uh, used for. It's difficult to stand here and say, I want something. Yes, I'm a council person for the first district. And people tell me I've done good things. And I've done it in, as a servant. My faith tells me that we're all neighbors. And with that comes responsibility and accountability. So I'm standing here not asking, but just reinforcing what the pastor has told you many times. The victory is already won. My steps have been ordered, and I am assured that whatever it is, it's done in proper and good order. And I've got nothing to worry about. But this homecoming, it's so special, uh, and I guess it's some of the reasons why, you know, you want to make a full circle, uh, although painful as it is. I'm holding my mom's Bible, All right. and she had many Bibles that I still have. And late at night or early in the morning, I grab a Bible to read. But she marked them up, so I just go to the section that she had. And it's always encouraging. It's always memorable and always recenters me on the word. You know, it is not about you. No matter how much the world says, it's not about you. And if we can keep that in mind, if we can keep in our hearts what's going on in this church and what the words of the bishop says, we will be forever more grateful. So yes, there's an election coming. You guys have already said how you feel about that. And whether you vote for me or someone else, people died for this pleasure, for that privilege, and for that honor. But as I said before, my steps are already ordered. The victory is already won. Mm. And I'm just going to sit here and enjoy the rest of this service. Amen. So, Bishop, if we get a little wild, uh-huh. if, the, if, the, if the spirit hits my wife and we get a little crazy, I'm home. I'm home. So, thank you.
Thank you, Bishop. Thank you, congregation. Amen. Yes, yes. Very good. We don't give the other ones that much time. We. <laughs> this is for New Calvary. This is a T-shirt that was made that celebrates uh, Juneteenth. All right. If you know anything about Juneteenth in Delaware, the founder uh, of that Juneteenth movement for Delaware belonged to this church. Yes, yes, yes he did. Deacon Bernie Wilkins. We, we honor him with this shirt. If you would like one of these shirts, would you see Deaconess Laverne Adderley uh, so that we can carry on his legacy of service not only to the people of God, but to the state of Delaware. Would you do that? Amen. Amen. All right, I got, I got all of my assignments out of the way. Let me see the hands of all those who are tithers. You are, you are a, a regular tither. Now, uh, you, may, you may put your hands down. Some of, some of the members of New Calvary did not follow instructions. Last Sunday, they were informed to invite somebody. Don't take them from their place of worship because there's a whole lot of people don't have a place don't go nowhere those are the ones that, that we are looking for and we're supporting but I, I kind of suspect by the looks of some of y'all that you, you are worshipers you are churchgoers which means you are also tithers Amen. Um, tithing is um, the, the bloodline of the work uh, of the church. The people of God have been blessed in such a way that uh, they are in a position to share and give back. Uh, a tenth is, is baby steps. It's a starting point. Uh, so however you give and however you tithe, that's, a, that's on you, uh, between you and God. And then there are those who are givers because you you sow into the ministry. So it's offering time. Uh, if you would, please get your offering in your hand so that I can offer a pastoral prayer. Moses prayed over the Israelites when they were in the wilderness that God would not wipe them out. It was a pastoral prayer. I believe that prayer is the key, but... Sometimes uh, you need uh, the prayers of your covering uh, to uh, uh, speak to the situation. Some of you give by uh, your check or cash or cash app or give the fi. Uh, those are our options here. Um, but whatever the case may be, if it's your device or your check or your money, I want to pray. Father, we thank you once again for your bounty, for all of your blessings. Lord, we enjoy your favor simply because of your graciousness. Last Sunday, we talked about how your mercies are new every day. Why? Because we have stuff going on, looking at us, coming our way every day. But there your mercies are covering us we pray now lord for every giver that you would bless their gift that you would make up fill the void that has been created by their generosity and their sense of faithfulness fill it in such a way that they will know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you are pleased with what you have we have done for the kingdom Father, it's not you that needs the blessing, but it is the work of the kingdom, and it is your glory. That's why we tithe. That's why we give. Bless every gift, large and small. Bless every giver, and we will.
continue to give your name praise, glory, and all honor. In the wonderful, in the rich, salacious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, if y'all would, please. If you are a giver, would you put your hands together and give God some praise. Ushers and trustees are coming so that we can lift this offering and get all of that out of the way and move into our time of worship. Anybody ready for the word? Not as much as I am. <laughs> come on, come on, let's let's lift this offering.
Hallelujah. We're going to continue to set the atmosphere with our worship and our praise. How many believe that greater is coming for you? Amen. Come on, we got only heard one voice that's speaking as Adelaide. How many know greater is coming for you? Hallelujah. How many know God is right now changing your story in your worship? I, 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 look, I, I'm believing it for myself. I can't believe it for you. How many believe that God is changing your story? Hallelujah. And how many believe that every weapon that is formed is being disengaged right now as we speak? How many believe in God for that? See, we're just sitting down on God. But today when you look at that football game, you're going to be standing up and running around the house. I'm believing God that every weapon, come on, every weapon is being disengaged right now in our life. That greater is coming, amen? That we're, nothing is being delayed in our life. Nothing is being denied in our life. Hallelujah. We are not defeated. We the head. Come on. I need some worshipers in here to worship with me so we can bump on heaven. We are the head and not the tail. We are above and not beneath, but we are above only. This is the word. I'm not speaking something that I just made up. This is the word of the Lord, that victory shall be mine. How many know victory shall be yours? I was talking to Bishop one day. He said, um, Reverend, victory is guaranteed. People of God, victory is guaranteed in your life. Do you believe God for that? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are now, thank you for allowing me to be your crazy worship leader. That's right. <laughs> And we are now going to have a, um, a ministry, a song by the praise team. And none other after that is our bishop. Get ready. T.D. Jake said, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Come on, get ready for the word. Get ready for this worship as they set the atmosphere. Get ready to receive what thus saith the Lord. Remember, it's coming from one voice, but tailor made for everybody. Amen. Amen. Church.
Oh, yes, you have. Cause all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I may go, oh, I will sing of your goodness, oh God. needs a sister Mary that can set the atmosphere that can um, connect with both God and the people so I want to thank you for allowing the Lord to use you in that manner amen Let's pray. Father, once again, we stand in need of your moving on our behalf. Time has been spent preparing and reading and studying and rewriting and reconsidering the word. But all is in vain if we don't give you freedom to speak. So take this moment, Lord, and use it for your glory. Take this vessel and use me uh, as I could not use myself. Uh, I decrease that your spirit may enlarge and uh, take over and consume this time uh, for preaching. It's not me. <laughs> Boy, do I know it's not me. But you, oh God, that speaks from the word of God. So, Lord, have your way. And then, Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart, may they be acceptable in thy sight. My Lord, my strength, and my Redeemer. 
Let all of God's people say amen. amen. And amen again. Amen. I am so grateful. Thank you again for your presence here today, New Calvary. I am always indebted for your faithfulness. You know, we have visitors. They come and they go. But there are those of you who are here every Sunday morning ready to serve God. Whether you are uh, serving as a deacon or an usher, a deaconess, a mother of the church, a missionary, an usher, uh, or a cook in the kitchen, somewhere counting money. Uh, I don't take any of that for granted, and I always want to stop and say thank you. You didn't have to do it. So it's a good thing that people are ready to serve and to do. So I bless the Lord for uh, our first lady here this morning. Amen. Mr. Oliver. Amen. That way I have somewhere to look. Amen. Well, y'all don't say amen. I just look over there. And she'll give, give me a nod. And if I'm going too long, she'll... Give me one of those. So she's my she's my uh, uh, barometer for how things are going. Well, last Sunday we we started a sermon series called Reconnect. I came back from a month's vacation, feeling like I needed a reconnect. Uh, and I said to myself, if I feel that way. Knowing what I know about the members of this church, a whole bunch of them was on vacation while I was on vacation. <laughs> so you need to reconnect too. <laughs> well, there are times when we all need to feel uh, like God is nearer rather than further away from us. And the fact of the matter is we, we do that for several reasons. Sometimes uh, it's neglect. You know, sometimes we get out of our, our prayer modes and, and habits, and, and then sometimes things get in the way, and we get busy and up-temple. Uh, but the fact of the matter is we need to always uh, be aware that we can always reconnect with God. And that's what, that's what this second installment is about. Uh, it comes from James writings, the Apostle James, he writes in chapter 4, uh, I pray you have your outline, just, you know I'm spoiling y'all, you can't go too many places and, and find out what the preacher talking about until the preacher stand up and open his mouth, but you know what, I don't care nothing about that as long as you get it, and, and it, and it gets in here and you can put it in your Bible and take it and look at it later. And do something with it. I got some young preachers. They do more than look at it later. Uh, they, 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 they use Amen. it for something. Hey. <laughs> but guess what? It's, it's not my word. So that's all right. Isn't it? It's not mine. It's, this is God's word. So who am I? James chapter 4, verse 8, these words have been recorded. It says, draw near to God. Yes. Y'all can stand. Y'all didn't know. That one, that one little verse was like, you mean I got to stand up? Yes. For that one verse? Yes. Yes. This is the word of God. Yes. The Bible says that when the man of God stood in the pulpit, the people stood up yes. to hear the word of God, Amen. meaning they were previously seated. If, if they were from the Eastern culture, they may have been laying and lounging. Yes. But they stood up because the word of God was being, sometimes you need to let people know why we do what we do. Yes. You know, if I go to a funeral, I don't be talking about stand up because there's some people there, you know. I done got so far off of where I'm trying to go. Huh? James 4 and 8. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. 
Boy, that's a sermon right there. But James does not leave matters alone. He, he gets all up in our business. He says, cleanse your hands, you sinners. And purify, I thought he was talking about New Calvary. And purify your hearts, you double-minded. I, I don't think James was in a good mood when he wrote these words. He was tired of church folk. You may be seated. We, we pray God's. There's something wrong with your hands. <laughs> Where they been? What's wrong with your heart? You know, we live in this up-tempo uh, land and environment where everything is on immediate demand. We have, we have no patience. We don't have deadlines, but nevertheless, we're always in a hurry to get somewhere. Yes. Signs that have been posted uh, uh, that post the legal speed limit uh, have become nothing more than roadside ornaments to be ignored. I stood at that light, my wife and I waiting on the light to change, and the car behind us zoomed around us through the light and kept right on going as if it was nobody's business. Uh, fast food and grab, quick grab and eat go, eateries, uh, they're competing with the nice sit-down restaurants. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they want our business because they know we're in a hurry. Our stoves and our ovens have been replaced by microwaves and, and convection appliances. And even when we, and I've done this, even when we stand in front of the microwave, we can hear ourselves as the microwave is going saying, hurry up! For many of us, life has become a constant rush to get where we're going and to hurry and finish what we're doing. That's why work ethics have fallen off. I don't get on merry-go-rounds and roller coasters because work ethics have fallen off. And people are in a hurry to do what they need to do so they can take a break or go home. I remember mean, when I worked in the factory in Detroit, the most dangerous place was to be in the parking lot when the work hour was over. <laughs> Them people was coming out there like they really had somewhere to go. What am I saying? In the hustle and bustle of everyday life, our relationships with God can sometimes feel distant. Yes, yes. James 4 and eight therefore offers a profound promise yes. that if we draw near to God, yes. He will draw near to us. Yes. So I want to continue this sermon series called Reconnect. Uh, I want to take up this discussion one more time of how to get back on track in our relationship with God. And I believe that Friends and Family Day is an excellent setting for a reconnect moment. I think I'm right about it. You know, the fact is, uh, too often, in addition to absence and neglect, we drift away from God because of our hectic pace. In our preoccupation with things that really wind up stealing our time with God. And as we reconnect as family, as we reconnect with friends on this special day, I want to explore another reconnect moment. I, I want to talk about uh, how we can actively reconnect with God, and then began to re-experience his presence in our lives. Now, if, I'm not talking about, you know, no, I'm not suggesting that just because you've drifted that you are backslider. That's not what I'm saying because I've done a little drifting in my day. All right, but I have not backslid. and I have a relationship, but it's not where I want it to be. Some stuff has gotten in the way. Yes. 
Oh, I'm the only one in here. <laughs> so, so that's 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 my premise. These are my points. I wanna I wanna talk about drawing near with intention, mm -hmm. All right. drawing near with purity, mm -hmm. and drawing near with expectation. Amen. Don't get any simpler than those three points. Y'all will remember him and be able to talk about it when you get out of here. First of all, to draw near to God, we do so with intention. James, the writer of our text, the half-brother of Jesus, he begins uh, by saying in verse 8, the A clause, come near to God. Yes. Notice that you and I must be the ones who initiate this Reunion. Uh, I don't know if this is the case in your family, but it was my generation, uh, my siblings and, and cousins, that we decided that it was time for our family to begin to have regular gatherings again uh, so that our children would get to know their nieces and nephews, their cousins, their aunts and, and uncles. Because we were, you know, people were moving away and we were getting detached. Yes. So we took the initiative. Yes. Some of us got together and decided it was time to reconnect with yes. family. Yes. And I, I re recommend that we continue to do that. Yes. But, but not too long ago, that went well for years, but not too long ago, we got together again, that same group of, of family members, and we decided that it was time for the next generation uh, to take over the, the duties of pulling everyone together. You know, family reunions don't happen by accident. Somebody's doing some heavy lifting. They're writing, they're planning, they're, they're inviting, they're, they're, they're uh, organizing. Yes. Somebody has to be concerned enough yes. to take the initiative to pull family together, yes. even when family are all over uh, the country. Yes. My members are yes. looking at me strange because I'm, I'm preaching from my, my uh, printout when normally it's from my iPad, but the iPad is full of the devil this morning. Mm. <laughs> come on, baby, come on. And I have rebuked him. <laughs> <laughs> Much like with family, re re reconnecting uh, with God requires intentionality. Just as we make plans for our relationship with friends and family, we've got to be deliberate in our pursuit of God. It took time and planning for you to be here this morning. You had to get your stuff together. You had to make sure that things were in order. Intentionality is the result of planning. Amen. So... This involves setting aside also time of, for prayer, yes. time for worship and, and reading your word. And it's not a passive act. When you, when you try to get drawing, draw back to God, it's not, it's not, a, but it's not passive. It has to be proactive. Yes. Uh, uh, it's got to be a decision to prioritize our relationship with God. The question is, how important is God? I know you love your church. I know you say you love your pastor. But how important is God in that equation? So J James gives us clear, simple instructions. He says very simply before he goes to calling us sinners and, and whoremongers, he, he says, draw near to God. Yes. Somebody looking for that whole moment. It's not in there. I just said that. He says, come near to God. What that says to me is that, that wherever you go, you need to have God somewhere in the equation. And wherever you are right now might be too far away from where God wants you to be. I, I, want, I don't want 
you to be able to, to, to pinpoint God because that's not possible. I want to be able to call on the same God that I spoke to earlier yeah. when my trouble comes. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Come on. Yeah. I, that's when, when, when I'm in trouble, I don't need to be doing a reintroduction. God, this is me. No, I want to talk to the same God that I spoke to early this morning. The God that I worshipped in his holy presence on Sunday morning. All this, what it does is it underscores the need to reconnect with God. Uh, it's like when, when the phone rings and, and, and you find out who's on the other end. And you say to that person, you know what, I was just thinking about you. Matter of fact, I was just getting ready to call you. That speaks of an existing connection. Relationships remain strong when we keep each other on our minds. People you love, people you care about, you, you walk around saying to yourself, I wonder what he's doing right now. I, I wonder uh, why I haven't heard from uh, my daughter or my son in a day or two. But let, let me get on the phone and call. Question. I wonder how long it takes you to feel that way about God. How is God operating in my life this morning? James says, come near to God. James says, pick up your phone. And give him a call. Don't wait until trouble rises. He says be intentional. Come near to God. It's not by accident or coincidence that, that a plant, when, 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 when the plant grows, it usually grows toward the direction of where the light is. So the plant turns intentionally toward life-giving light. Likewise, we must be intentionally as we turn our hearts and minds back to God. So, so, so first step, draw near to God with intention. In addition to intentionality, secondly, we draw near to God with purity. Mm. Yes, sir. Allow me to jump down to, to uh, the C clause of that eighth verse. Right. The Apostle James, he writes, he says, Cleanse your hearts, yeah. you sinners, and, and purify uh, it's your hands, rather, and then purify your hearts, uh, you double minded. So reconnecting with God involves more than just physical proximity. It requires spiritual and moral cleansing. Get rid of hurt. James calls us uh, to wash our hands and to purify our hearts, which symbolizes repentance and, and the need to rid ourselves of sin and internal conflict. You know, I used to hear my, my mother say when we came in from outside, she said, go wash your hands, boy. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, but before I learned about germs and diseases, I would look at my mother strangely and I'd look at my hands. I said, I don't see no dirt <laughs> on my hands. But, but she was telling me to go uh, wash my hands. Uh, you can't always see. What's wrong in your life? You need somebody like James to say, go wash your hands. Somebody who knows there's something there that you can't see. Danger is there. And he says to us, go and wash your hands. That's what he says. So the question is, where your hands been? <laughs> That's what it says. 
we will never learn how to live right. That's what James is saying. We will never learn how to live right if we don't first have a sincere desire to live right. My mother used to say, you, you, you don't have do right in you. She understood why we, would, we were wrong because she said, you don't have it in you right now. Uh, so, so we've got to learn how to desire. When it comes to living righteously, if we would all be honest, some days are better than others. That's as nice as I can put it. But I don't ever want to lose the desire to be right in the sight of God. Pet sins notwithstanding habits and, and things we know we have no business doing, notwithstanding, we still should want to do right. Yes. So when you finish dirtying up your hands, it ought to make you feel some kind of way. That's what lets me know I'm saved. Is that I ain't happy with what happened, what was said, what was done. I may have some good days and some not so good days, but like James, I want to purify my heart with prayer and repentance. Somebody join me in saying, ouch. Woo. It, yeah. it requires us from time to time to begin to examine ourselves, uh, some of the areas of our lives where, where sin may be creating distance between you and God. Don't you sit here acting like you don't sin. Don't sit here acting like you. it's the other folk. No, it's me. we all have an issue, some kind of issue. And if you sit there saying you don't have an issue, that's your issue. <laughs> so, so what I've done is I've reached a point in my walk with God where I know that I have that I I won't I won't get God's ear. About my situation until I come clean yes. with him. Yes. Uh, until God and I have a heart to heart yes. talk. Yes. God I know I was wrong and, and yes. you know I was wrong. Yes. But would you please yes. uh -huh. see about your boy. Yes. James says until you come clean with God you're just being double minded. Yes. And know what he's saying to yes. The term double-minded is used to describe someone who is divided in their loyalties, divided in their allegiances, particularly in their relationship with God. It speaks of a lack of a wholehearted commitment to God. Somebody say, ouch. Ouch. Double-mindedness speaks of... That was a whole lot of ouch. Right here, right now. Double-mindedness speaks of spiritual instability. We're unable to be stable in our faith walk. Sometimes when you look in the mirror, you can't see your face clearly because... Of the smudges and, and the grime on the mirror. So, yeah. so you have to take time to clean off the mirror. Yeah. Similarly, yeah. removing the grime of sin and double-mindedness from our lives allows us to see God more clearly. Yeah. To experience his closeness yeah. once again. I'm going to leave you all alone because it, 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 this is not a friendly or friends and family day soon. So, so the path to reconnecting with God is to first be intentional. I'm one of them pastors I review. 
Cause, cause a lot of pastors they think they run off as if you got it, you know. You didn't put it. No, I know my people. So we review. We talk about first the intentionality of reconnecting, and secondly, we draw near with the purity of heart, and then and then finally, we draw near to God with expectation. Yes, this is what separates us from the rest of the world. Verse 8, the B clause, it says, and he will draw near to you. It's a promise. It's a fact. The promise in this verse is not just talking about making an effort, but also anticipating God's response. When I have my heart to heart with God, when we go face to face and I admit all of my stuff and he cleans my slate, then I sit back with expectation that what I ask for, God will see about. This expectation is grounded in faith and in the trust of God's promises. The Bible, you know, the Bible's rich with promises of God uh, offering hope and comfort and assurance to his believers. Y'all don't believe me. Psalm ch- chapter 91 verse verse 4. He says he will cover you with his feathers. And under his wings uh, you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and your rampart. Second Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 3. It says but the Lord is faithful. Fall, he will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. Matthew 11 and 28. Come to me and all ye that are late, weary and uh, heavy laden and I will give you rest. Uh, that's a promise. He says in Proverbs uh, uh, cha- chapter 3 verses 5 and 6. He says trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own uh, understanding. uh, uh, All your ways. uh, uh, Acknowledge him and he will. Every one of those had a promise. And he will uh, uh, make your paths uh, straight. So so God uh, is a promise keeper. Our approach to God should be filled with hope. It should be filled with confidence uh, that he's eager to draw near to us. Sin makes me eager to try to find out where God is. But uh, when I find him, when I, when I get through the muck and the mire of my life, uh, I discover that God is right there just as eager. Say, boy, what took you so long? You've got to believe that your prayers are being heard. And your efforts are are met with his grace. Cultivate that attitude of anticipation. We've got to to walk around expecting God to bless us. Expecting God to see about it. Expecting God to hear us. Other folk hope, they pray and hope. That God hears their cry. I pray and expect. That God is going to see about me. And I've also found out as I get out your way today. That when he comes and when he answers. He doesn't always give me the answer that I was looking for. In the first place. I I, 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 I miss my, my 55th high school Class reunion. Uh-huh. Some of y'all ain't been here. <laughs> but they sent out pictures mm-hmm. of the class. <laughs> and I saw my classmates. I saw some of those girls that I prayed for God to bless me. I just knew that God was going to see about me. This girl, I'm trying to tell you. 
I was excited. <laughs> Fifty-five years later, <laughs> I'm somewhere saying, "God, thank you." Hallelujah. Hey! <laughs> To know that God looks out for you when you don't look out for yourself. <laughs> it's good to know that God knows what's best for you. I love God because He looks out for His boy. He keeps me out of trouble. He goes where I He goes before me to keep me from walking in danger. God is a good God. God is a great God. And He is a God that I can count on. And the results of mercy will cover my errors. I'm so glad that God looked beyond my faults and saw all my needs. And one good morning, when this life is over. fact that them little girls turned me down. I went off to college. And, and I said, I'm going to try again. And I saw a smile that turned my world around. Come on, talk about it, Bishop. And, uh, and, and, and I said, Lord, here I come again. <laughs> and the Lord gave me a little operating room. And 52 years later, there she is. Still looking good. Million dollar smile. You know, I, that's not me bragging. That, that's me talking about the goodness of God. You, you got a goodness of God situation in your life. Maybe by your side. Waiting for you when you get home. God is good. He's faithful. Am I right about it? Come on, let's give God some praise. Shall we all stand? All over this place. <laughs> and he keeps on being good. Woo! If I could just tell you all the good stuff that God has allowed to come into my life, all of the good people that God has blessed me with on my journey to heaven. You have those same testimonies, 
but we've got to grasp them and tell the world about it. If you're here today and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ in the pardon of your sins, then, then I want to make this appeal to you that, that you align yourself with the only one who's going to make an eternal difference in your life. You may run into somebody who will make a difference, but that difference may not be eternal. It may be for a season. But God will transform your life for an eternity. But you've got to invite Jesus Christ into your life. Choose him as your personal Lord and Savior. And let that journey begin. If you're here while I'm speaking, would you step out from where you're standing? If, if you're viewing this on Facebook or YouTube, if you would, make your way to your secret place of prayer and talk to God about your status, about your relationship with Him. Those of us who are already saved, we're praying for you. But we're also re-evaluating. We're, we're giving a, 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 a once-over of our walk with God. Yes, yes. There are areas of our lives. I, I said this to somebody who, who talked so badly about backsliders. And, and, and I, had to, I had to stop them from all of that hate and remind them. There's some backslider in everybody here. You may not be this, this flaming backslider that everybody is shaking their heads and wondering what's wrong with you. But, but there may be an area of your life. There may be a, a way of thinking that is backslidden. Mm. If y'all knew y'all was going to get beat up this bad, y'all would have said, nah, that's all right. I'll see y'all on Easter. <laughs> but we want to draw near to God in those areas where we're lacking in other words we do, we're just going to clean things up I got a friend who works on my computer every now and then he's got to come in there and do some stuff with the computer and clean it up sort of run faster and run better and there's a time in our spiritual walk we need a clean up if you need a clean up I want to pray for you come on it's alright you're not by yourself come on it's prayer time Maybe you don't need a cleanup, but you got some stuff. You got some, some issues and worries and burdens and questions. Bring all that to the altar. This is a, uh, we're like planet fitness. We're a judgment free zone. You got stuff, I got stuff. We just going to try to get it right together. Are you here? Every head is bowed. Some didn't come, but I'm praying for you as well. Father in heaven, we come before you with our assortment of issues and worries and faults, shortcomings. We bring all of that. We're reminded that Peter gave us advice. He said, casting all your cares upon him. And the reason why, for he cares for you. We thank you for your love and your care and your concern about our situation and our condition. 
And we come admitting that we've failed you, we've, we've departed and, and become distant in our relationship. We're coming here to fix it. To draw near. To reconnect. So that we can move on and do some of the stuff that you called us to do. That you created and gifted us to be able to do. We've been slowed down by double mindedness and, and filthy hands. Clean us up. That's our prayer today. Watch over that area of our life that we, we always seem to be fooled by the devil. He can't get us with that stuff on that we, the other day, but, but there's an area where he can always seem to catch us. Give us strength. Give us, give us the words to say, even if it means going home another way. Sometimes, Lord, we'll, we'll avoid route one because it's crowded and full of traffic. Let's avoid the route ones of our spiritual walk so, so we don't get a roadblock. We don't get slowed down and, and hindered. Have your way with us, Father. We believe you when you say you care for us. We believe you when you say you will forgive us. We believe you when you say you love us. We believe you. And we trust you today. Thy will be done in our lives. And it's in the wonderful name of Jesus the Christ, our Savior. We go home satisfied. We go home confident. We go home expecting a blessing. In Jesus' name we pray today. Amen. And amen. Put your hands together. Oh, not for me, not for me. You're putting your hands together for God. Give God some praise. My, my, my. You may be seated, those of you who are still standing. Normally, normally we would, we would have a wonderful meal prepared the tent would be outside in the parking lot and we'd have things but but we we ran into a couple of uh, hitches uh, in our um, delayed planning for this annual day uh, so that won't happen we thank you for coming but we we see that God is still faithful all of you who have arrived here you've made this day a success and we just want to say thank you. Give yourselves a hand. For those of you who are here and your pastor's been looking for you, if you don't tell, I won't tell you. That'll be between us. I'll see him, I'll see her, and I'll say, hi, how you doing? He'll never know. She always stands. Thank y'all for letting me have fun <laughs> and be me. <laughs> it works. It works for me. And just before we close out, there are those who, are, who have been waiting on the pastor to return because they want to get baptized. I'm, I'm ready and I'm available. See your deacon and find out what date that's going to be. I've got a couple here that they, they're straining at the reins to get married. I think I better hurry up. And, and have them tied in knot before they run off. Amen. There are others that are, they have uh, pre-marriage counseling in, in the future. My wife and I, we do it together. We think we have a little advice to, to offer. So exactly what I'm saying is I'm back, I'm ready, and you better catch the pastor while he's still fresh. <laughs> Shall we look to the Lord? God, you've blessed us wonderfully. We feel your warmth and your presence. We thank you for friends 
who are faithful. We thank you for family that, that show their love in so many different ways. We go down from this place excited about what you have for us in our immediate future. We pray your blessings on all that we shall put our hands to. That it would give you glory some kind of way. Somehow. And then Lord in these difficult days in which we live. We pray for children who have to go to school and dodge bullets. We pray for uh, innocent victims who are being killed needlessly, senselessly. We pray for people who don't regard the laws of the land. We pray for corrupt politicians who are, who are trying to take over and get power to do things that are not good for the people of God. We pray for those who believe because uh, we support certain politicians that, that our religion is fake. But we stand on the word of God no matter what. So have your way. Bless every home that's represented here today. Every church and pastor that's represented. We shall give your name praise, glory, and all honor. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance and give thee peace. And the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep thy heart and thy soul through Christ. Henceforth now and forever. Let us all say amen, 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 amen. and amen. amen. God bless you. God is good. I, I bring my little portable. Thank you, Reverend. Down here. I got to sit down and talk.